Welcome to this tutorial all about cast on stitch roses. The first thing you're going to want to do is come up in the center of the circle and grab a little bit of fabric and bring your needle back up at the base of the thread. You're going to then start to make loops around the needle. It can be kind of hard to do this one handed so I recommend kind of twisting it around your other hand and an embroidery stand makes this a lot easier. You're going to twist it around and make a stack of these little cast on stitches until the height of the stitches you make equals the amount of fabric you grabbed. Once you've made enough stitches, you're going to basically pull your needle and thread through. And I like to kind of pinch the stitches you make. And then you might need to pull the tail a little bit because sometimes it can get pulled through. And then once you're done, you'll just secure the stitch at the bottom of those stitches. And that's how you do a basic cast on stitch. So for roses, I like to start kind of towards the center like we did in this example. And then I like to make another second set of cast on stitches alongside the first one I made. And then I like to kind of work my way around the circle. So once I have these two stitches here, I'm just gonna kind of go up at an angle and grab the fabric and make pretty much the same size cast on stitch. You can do this and kind of work counterclockwise or clockwise, it doesn't really matter either way, but you want to kind of layer the stitches kind of similar to how rose petals would lay. I think it looks a lot more natural that way. In this tutorial, I'm just going to basically go through and stitch this entire little floral motif that I drew up. So I'm going to use yellow and stitch another cast on stitch rose. This will, of course, take a little bit less stitches since the circle is a little bit smaller, but I'm just going to be basically doing the exact same thing for this rose that I did for the pink rose. I do find it helpful sometimes, especially with an embroidery stand, to kind of rotate your hoop and that way you're not having to make these stitches super sideways or upside down. I think it's easier when you can just kind of make the stitches vertically. So I just kind of turn my hoop as I go sometimes if I feel like it's at an angle that's kind of awkward to work in. So that's just kind of a little helpful tip that I find to make it a little bit easier on yourself. For the leaves, I am using satin stitches. I'm going around the outside of the leaves that are a little bit bigger with a darker green color. And then I'm gonna go back in with a lighter green color and stitch kind of vertical satin stitches in the center of each of those leaves. Thank you. 
I then filled in some of the more scattered leaves with satin stitches with that lighter green color. And then finally for the leaves that have a center vein down the middle of them, I used a fly stitch for that. For the stems, I always like to use stem stitch for little stems. I think it looks really nice for any sort of floral motif. So I just used, I think, three strands for the stems. And then I made a couple of detached chain stitches for the little viney leaves at the bottom. Finally, for the little flower bud, I'm just using a bullion knot, which is very similar to a cast on stitch, except instead of looping your thread, you're just going to twist it around the needle. And you have to kind of be careful with this because sometimes you can twist them too tight and it can be really hard to pull your needle through. So just try to do them firmly, but not super tight so that it'll be easier. And then for the little leaves around the stem, I just did some satin stitches and a little straight stitch for the actual stem. I thought it would be kind of fun to do something with this little motif instead of just keeping it in a hoop. So I decided to cut out the fabric. And honestly, I think I may have cut it a little bit too short for this, but I made a little mason jar cover with it. So I traced the inner ring of an embroidery hoop and mine was a five inch hoop and it was, like I said, too small. So I would recommend probably a seven or eight inch hoop to trace for this. So you have a little bit of leftover fabric but I just cut it out and stitched around it. And finish it with some twine and here's how it turned out. 
I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more embroidery tips and tutorials. Thanks so much.